Hey guys, it's Tanner with Built Not Bot, and we're building a pedestal dining table and bench, and I've been battling the worst cold ever, so I'm gonna take a little bit of medicine and get right to work. All right, we're heading out to the shop, bright and early on a Sunday morning. The grind never stops, baby. Let's get to work. Today's project is for a client and I'm going to be doing something I've always wanted to do, kind of a milestone build, if you will, and that's making my own pedestals. And I'm going to be building a dining table with two massive pedestals to hold it up, as well as a bench, and everything is going to be made out of white oak. I made this edge profile of the pedestal out of MDF and I designed this from scratch using the Shaper Origin Studio. I'm very new to any sort of software as far as designing goes, so it's a huge learning curve and it took me a long time to get a profile that I liked and that I thought I could actually build. The cool thing about designing your own profiles is this is going to be the only table in the world with this exact pedestal design. I've got to ask, have any of you ever heard of a five gallon bucket of wood glue? Because up until recently, I didn't even know these existed, but sure enough, I was able to purchase five gallons of Type On 3 and I used a lot of it in these glue ups. And a pro tip that I didn't use here is add a little salt between your panels to prevent them from sliding everywhere. Well, that was a little bit wild, a lot of glue, probably too much glue. Actually, I know it's too much glue, but we have one big ass heavy block of solid white oak. So I cut out the um, bottom stretcher to this whole pedestal base system and I'm really new to any sort of software when it comes to digitally designing stuff. I've always just hand sketched and then kind of winged it from there because my sketches are absolutely horrible. But anyways, this is kind of a really rough design on the software itself, I knew it wasn't going to be perfect, but I just tried to get it as close as I could. On the Shaper Studio uh, system to design stuff like this, uh, you're a little bit limited and it's really simple, but to get like certain contours and stuff, I was having a really tough time on. So this right here is supposed to be nice and flat for that pedestal to sit on. Then I wanted it to be like a nice taper down and then curve and then curve. And it's more like straight, 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 straight. And then I finally did figure out a curve on the end. So I'm gonna contour this with the sand, uh, with the sander in hopes that I can get it much more like what I want it to be in my head and then we'll go from there. on camera but this went from being like jagged lines or straight lines segmented to a nice contour. If you can picture this and then this is going to be a tenon that's going to go into there about an inch or so that's kind of what this pedestal or trestle style base that I designed is going to look like. So this is all the easy work the hard work is going to be tracing this out onto that, and cutting it out on the bandsaw. But that's a problem for tomorrow, not today. A pretty important step in this process is all of your layout. So right now I'm just finding the center of this base and then I'm going to transfer lines across all sides so that I can line my template up center on center in hopes that as I flip this around and trace everything lines up the way it's supposed to. And then it's as easy as preschool where you just have to stay within your lines when you're coloring. The only difference here is it's about 80 pounds, it's just shy of 12 inches, and there's a blade spinning really fast that'll cut your hand off if you slip. All jokes aside, this was extremely nerve-wracking, and I was a little bit scared throughout this whole process. The first one I cut 
I actually had to scrap, so it was a complete waste, which was tough because I just take that hit and profits right in the you know what. The second and third went much better. It's important that you keep all of your offcuts because you got to tape those on as you rotate it from one side to the other. With the huge sigh of relief, the two pedestals are done and it's time to switch gears to the lower supports of this base. I used a template and I was double side taping it down onto my lumber to roughly cut it out and then flush trim it. But that double sided tape is so strong that it's ripping apart my MDF templates. I'd love to know if you use something different because this could have been catastrophic if I wouldn't have already had one or two of those pieces cut out already. I'm also building a bench that's going to go along with this table and I made a miniature version of those pedestals earlier with some small modifications and these went so much better than the dining table pedestals. I think mostly because of their size but also because I was learning with each step of this process. You'll see me using double sided tape to tape on the pieces that I off cut right away so that I don't lose them and everything matches up much better and this gives you a flat reference to go off of. If you feel like I've earned it, I would greatly appreciate it if you would like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. I put a lot of effort into these videos and these builds. I greatly appreciate it. Well, we've got both pedestals clamped together with that bottom stretcher. I'm not gonna run anything across the top at this point in time. That sucker is so heavy and beefy. I think that just attaching it right through the top part of the pedestal into the bottom of the table will be just fine. I should also mention off camera, I made some miniature pedestals. These are gonna be for the bench. And I've got the bottom stretcher that's gonna connect those two right here and the top of the bench over here. But that was basically kind of a repeat of what I've, what I've already done here. I skipped the monotonous milling and glue up of this top, but I did want to share this little patchwork that I did on the bottom side of this table. So I used a bow tie inlay to keep a crack from expanding over time with seasonal change. And then by my left elbow, you can see a little piece of live edge from a board that I didn't mill away. And this was because I needed a certain width on this table and I only had enough lumber to get that exact width. So cutting out that little two inch section would have been an issue for me. So I just made a little patch to fill in that corner. And this patchwork is done just like doing a bow tie inlay. You just take whatever your piece of scrap wood is that you're going to use to fill. You scribe around the outside with a blade, router away most of the material, clean everything up with a chisel, and then glue it into place. With a little bit of cleanup work with a flush trim saw, a planer, and a sander, you're good to go. And the end is finally near. I just have to do the last bit of assembly and to assemble the top of the bench and the top of the table, I'm just using two threaded inserts on each side. I use a Forstner bit and then pre-drill a hole that's at least twice the width of my bolt to allow for seasonal movement. And I also highly recommend that you use a bolt to insert your threaded inserts into your lumber like I'm doing here with a drill. It saves you so much time and it's way easier than twisting them in by hand with a T-wrench. A little bit of Rubio Monocoat smoke for that beautiful natural finish. It looks so good with white oak and this project is complete. Mm -hmm.